Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Becoming an Entrepreneur right here on Yachting International Radio. And of course, I'm pleased to welcome Patrick Mafflin. He is, of course, the owner of Marine Accounts and Mortgages for Yacht Crew. Welcome back. Thanks so much for having us on our show, Rhea. One of the things that I'm quite interested in is we have an idea in our head, but how do we take that idea and truly decide what type of business it is that you are going to embark on and how do you figure out whether or not it's going to be profitable? So in our last episode, we touched on business plans and we sort of, I was suggesting that we broke the model a little bit on business plans and wrote them almost like a science or engineering report. And so, you know, looking at the kind of concept of the idea and breaking it down into components parts as to whether it's going to work, what you, what one needs to really focus on when shaping an idea in a business is there are lots of elements to it, I suppose, in the sense that certain businesses that you set up can literally be like a millstone around your neck. And for yachties particularly, who are used to having a very free and easy life, then maybe that type of business isn't for you. So, so if you were running a haulage firm and having to be required to, in the initial days, certainly drive those trucks, then maybe that's not a business for you. You also need to look at... Um, where you how you structure your idea of what your business is going to be in the sense is it a needs or a wants based business so where how we define that is i suppose a, a good example of a wants based business would be the luxury goods sector lv companies like that they're brilliant on an up market because people can afford these luxury items and they want to have them they aspire to buy them but obviously on a down market these are the businesses that are most affected initially but a needs based business say utility company or certain service companies, I suppose accountancy is an example, they will consistently re provide a return throughout. But what you'll find is it's a lot less sort of, there's a lot less peaks in the return that you receive from those businesses. And they're not sometimes always as exciting as, as developing a really unique product for the marketplace and, and watching that grow. I think if we look acutely at needs and wants based businesses, you must also look at one's risk profile because setting a fashion brand up, for example, is extremely fun, having tempted it in the past myself. But it's, so, it's highly risky and may never return a profit in the end. But yeah, if you started up a needs-based business, even washing cars or setting up a detailing operation in Mallorca, for example, with yachts, then you're going to always have a steady return. And so when shaping your ideas, there are, as we're touching on, there's the two broad sections, needs or wants, and then also start to dial into your own risk profile, if that makes any sense, what you perceive your appetite for risk to be. And then that would certainly help as a sort of guiding light to shape your ideas. Is it important also to do your due diligence and your research in is there a need for what you're offering and how many others are you competing against for the same offering absolutely 100 percent. i think that um i think there's a lot of people that have fantastic ideas but don't do the correct due diligence don't do this initial analysis that we touched on in the previous episode and if you don't do that you're just walking into it blind certainly there is a degree I remember years ago being taught about a beautiful example with Sony who did their due diligence on Walkmans and everyone said that they didn't, the market research came back unanimously that nobody wanted a Walkman. And now if you look, obviously I suppose we could argue that an iPhone is essentially an ev evolution of a Walkman everyone has. And that defied the market research, it just defied all strategy. But it did, you know, it did prove to be a unanimous success. And so what we've got now in emergence, particularly in the fintech market, is we've got this, people want to be disruptive, they want to disrupt the market. But one must appreciate that being disruptive can also come, as we keep touching upon, at high risk. So when trying to shape an idea based on the market and the appetite potentially for a product or service that you're creating, try to keep that in mind. Don't try to be too disruptive because it doesn't work for everyone but also as well, try to be innovative and provide something that's unique. Sometimes as well, I've found with businesses that I've launched, I've looked at the way that other companies have run them, the way that other companies have developed their products. 
and being the engineer that I am, I've liked the initial the initial molding and the initial concept, potentially the business idea or product that's been built, but realized that it needs a complete overhaul and have made a success in areas where others have failed. And on that note, one thing that I've always applied is this notion of product process people. When coming up with an idea, you've obviously got to have a good product. You've got to have a good process because if you don't have the right process in place, you're just going to hemorrhage money. And if you need the right people behind you as well, the one thing that I would advocate, but with caution, is try to bring people on board with you who have knowledge in that sector that can guide you. I've worked with the same business development manager, David Buckingham now, for over 10 years. And every idea that I have that, think, that I believe has legs, I will run, sit down, we'll go for lunch and run through it. Just so that I, because he understands me and Ailey and I understand him and I just need to sound my ideas of him. I think one of the things too that you have to be aware of going forward is that it's not easy. You've got to be prepared to put in the work, the time, the effort, the energy, and you've got to be able to pivot. So if your initial business idea is okay, but something comes up, you have to be able to pivot with it and change that original concept to go with what's happening today. Yes, certainly. I've always believed in pivoting ideas and being not being too proud to take it on the chin that your idea is failing and make radical changes. Yeah. I know businesses that just constantly plow money into something that is clearly failing, refusing point blank to take advice, make any changes. And they, you know, you see these poor companies. It's a bit like the Gordon Ramsay show on failing restaurants where you've got these poor people that are working sort of 14, 16 hours a day in a restaurant that's just falling apart around them. Unless you're prepared to make the pivot and make a bold stride and change with an idea that you're shaping, then you can very much be caught in a trap by which you've got to commit the hours to any idea to actually bring it to market and make something of a business. That's the, I suppose that's another key element to this is if you if you're looking a lot of people think that by going into business that they're just going to walk into a very easy lifestyle where they're working much fewer out much fewer hours than they were previously doing in their previous employment but that really isn't the case in the initial years i mean yeah it's taken me nearly a decade to shape my businesses to where they are right now when shaping an idea and creating something make sure as we said it's either needs or wants Make sure you actually enjoy doing it. If you don't go into a hygiene business, if you hate cleaning, just because you think it's profitable, do something that you love. So that, you know, it could cause a sense of purpose, basically. So if you've, Warren Buffett always says this as well, if you go, you know, if you go to work and you're doing something that you enjoy every single day, then it really doesn't feel like work. And certainly I felt that way with yachting. And I am passionate about the companies that I've set up because I believe in them and I believe in the product. And it's also what I also liked most of all about the businesses that I've created is so many people told me I couldn't do it. And for me, that was just amazing. One thing that I would add is just be prepared to spend at the very least five years of very hard work and dedication. Yes, there's certainly, it's going to be a trade-off, but it's worth it. And to be yes. honest, Got an idea, as we've touched on previously as well. Don't be that person that's still in six months' time sitting in your kitchen talking about it. Just go out there and do it. Yeah, Patrick, I want to say thank you ever so much again for your time. Thank you. Really enjoyed this show. And I look forward to our next one. Take care. You have been watching another edition of Becoming an Entrepreneur with Patrick Mathlin from Marine Accounts and Mortgages for Yacht Crew. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time.